How's it going, everyone? You're watching the Green Dream Project. You're about to watch part two of our interview with Karen and Bob. So stay tuned, and we'll get right back to the interview. lessons that you'd like to give people any warnings well, one piece of advice for people who are looking for property and they're coming from a different area because we had from the other video that uh, handyman shot we got a lot of calls <laughs> the furthest one was from Kenya and we they emailed us and it would be nice if you would put our uh, email in your description below thing because if people have more questions than what we've answered here we'd be happy to communicate with them but we actually got a guy from Kenya that was asking about plaster and what, what we used and things like that. Our first plaster, we used a, a Portland cement and clay and sand mix. But the purists of the cobbing people, that's like a no-no because you're not supposed to use Portland cement in your plaster because it, it doesn't breathe and we did. It lasted probably about five years, but it did start pulling away. Like you'd go like that, tap it, and it would be hollow in there. And it would start like sheets of it would drop off here and there. But, so then we redid the whole thing just using a, a lime and sand, and pretty much, and some coloring in the final coat. Yeah, and that that seems to be that seems to be holding really well and doing really well. Yeah, nice it breathes thing. more than the Portland cement. But I guess what I got away from saying the, the other piece of advice would be to know what you want to do with your property. And before you go out and buy a piece of property, um, when you find out what you want to do, a very good idea is to go to planning and zoning and they're very helpful and they will walk you through stuff and they will tell you friends of ours just recently they were ready to put money down on a piece of property and I, I was familiar with that piece of property. I drove past it all the time. And the realtor had told them that it was RU4, which enables you to opt out of the building um, inspections and things like that. And I just had a feeling, and I called Planning and Zoning and asked them because they hadn't done that yet. And uh, it turned out to be R36. It had been a split piece of property. And this was just a little piece of a bigger piece. So had they purchased it they would not they would have to be like a stick and brick house they couldn't opt out they couldn't do anything that they had wanted to do so they're there to help you and you know they you know it's it's wise to go and ask because then even if you have your heart set on a piece of property if the zoning's wrong you're pretty screwed that's you know it, they, it's really hard to change zoning on a property and expensive so, so definitely do your research. Do your research and due do. diligence, <laughs> and don't don't rely on a realtor. Not that they're trying to trick you or anything like that, but a lot of realtors just are not aware of some of the zone of the different zoning and what's allowed and what's land. not. <laughs> yeah, they just want to sell you some land, and it and it is if you read the fine print, it's up to you to do your due diligence. And planning and zoning will help you with that. They can, you know, lay it all out for you. And I'm sure you've worked with them, so you know that they're helpful. They're nothing to be afraid of. Uh, they're not going to come out after <laughs> you. They, but, but do yourself a favor so you don't end up with a piece of property you can't use. Because we even we have known people that uh, bought online sight unseen and came out here, and it's a big wash. It's like a, <laughs> it's like the Nile River or something. They're never going to build on it, so it's just, you know, a waste. Yeah, I think people from other areas of the country don't realize, like, well, it's the desert. You don't have to deal with any water things, but the washes here can be a, a factor in the rainy season. A big factor. As far as the access to your land and things like that, like people buy land just sight unseen off the internet. Yeah. yeah, I know people that bought properties on just south of Bisbee and they had issues with no legal access. Yeah. Again, that wasn't disclosed to them by the realtor. <laughs> we, we looked at a piece south of Bisbee down on Border Road down in that area and the same thing, we were really excited about it. It had a great southern exposure. It was everything we wanted. It was a good location. We were getting all excited about it and 
took it to planning and zoning and they said, oh, this is an illegal split. How that works here is a lot of these pieces used to be very big ranches and they just chunk off a piece for Aunt Mary and one for Uncle, Uncle Tom and there you go. And, and so when it comes around to reselling those pieces, they aren't really legal. You can get away with it when you're within family and, you know, it's your mom living next door, but when you sell to an outsider, that doesn't work. Let me just say that uh, I found these guys through Handyman's older video and, you know, I reached out to them and these two are absolutely amazing and they're so helpful and friendly and open. Since we've moved down here, we've become friends and they've been very inspirational, a constant source of guidance. It's amazing, and we're gonna put that. Uh, we're gonna put that email down below, and don't be afraid to reach out to them if you have any questions or. We've we've had about 60 people email, and some of them are in touch back and forth, and it's really nice because they let us know what their progress is and if they found. That's cool property. to watch people doing this. And case. it's yeah. fun to see people succeed in this because. It's, it's such a wonderful way to build because you can do what you want and that just makes it special. I almost feel like you two and Marsha Gibbons have become sort of like a hub for people looking to do off-grid and stuff like that. Like, oh, they come wonderful. to you to get the, uh, the blessing. Yeah, a lot more. I mean, <laughs> we've noticed a lot more people just since the time that we first moved here, which I mean, that's a pretty long time ago now, 2010. Yeah. And, but from then to now, Boy, it's a lot more people. A lot more like coming out here and doing this, and, and a lot, of a lot of people from other areas of the United States. So, you know, they're coming in kind of blind, and and it is nice to have, you know, like you're you're talking about a, a community that's starting to build, and that's that's a nice thing to have because they can go and see and actually see people doing it or who have done it. And, a lot of people moving toward that uh, off-grid, homesteading lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. You guys are trailblazers. It's part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have a, you know, a his I'm not a builder or an architect or anything like that. It's just, just kind of try to keep it simple and know what you know and know what you don't know. And, and don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. I mean, ask people who have done it. Go to the, you know, there's all kinds of videos and stuff, but you know, don't be afraid to ask people because most people are really willing to share because they're excited about it. Marsh is a really good example she, with her open houses. And, you know, she's taught a lot of people a lot of things. Do you want to talk about any about the paper creek technique or uh, the earthen flooring? You got anything to say about that? We didn't do earthen flooring in the house, but I did. I made a little, a little project out here, kind of my man workshop area there, and. Uh, I built a little cop structure out there where I wanted to practice on some other techniques that we didn't use on the house, like papercrete and like an earthen floor. Um, so I did do an earthen floor out there, and it worked. It worked out pretty good, actually. Lots of uh, linseed oil, <laughs> and um, and then I did a papercrete roof over it, which you know worked out pretty good, except for I can I didn't make my metal structure that I put the paper heat on quite stiff enough so I had to put a, a post in there and so but I mean the paper creed itself worked out pretty good it's kind of a fun thing to work with and just play around with you don't have to make everything square and it can be different shapes I didn't work with the paper creed but I think one of the downsides to it is it does have concrete in it and with the earthen building you can just use your hands and you know otherwise you've got to pretty much wear gloves or you get all dried out and blistery and that's that's one of the but things. Like you guys did the, uh, the fibrous adobe which is it's just like paper creek but instead of the Portland you just put the earth in there and you know that works pretty good too. Yeah. yeah I found that to be uh, almost kind of a little similar to the Cahaba. Except uh, just uh, with the paper instead of the uh, straw. Straw. Yeah. yeah, it's basically anything with fibers. Um, we've heard of it done with like horse hair and <laughs> all kinds of weird, different stuff. And you know, I'm sure just about anything would work that is fibrous. So, so having constructed with the earthen floor, do you have any comparisons between that and the concrete floor you used for the house? 
Well, for one thing, when you do the earth and floor, and then you got to like layers and layers of linseed oil to like seal it and everything, it makes it really dark. And so like here with the dust and everything and your foot, I mean, it's footprints. One hey, dog it's, print, it's, it's dark. Very, you know, it's a little <laughs> bit dark for, but earth and floor is certainly doable. It's like, yeah, when you're doing that linseed oil thing, it, it's like, you got to stay out of there for a while. Yeah, while it takes a while for the fumes to get out the, there so you could live in there. And we were eager to get inside before the second winter. It's kind of the difference you found is that just doing something like that would take a very long time. A lot longer. And for such a large expanse, this is a 600 square foot house. And what would you say your square footage is out there? Less than 100? 100, yeah. yeah it's, it's just a little tiny man cave thing. And um, the smell, just to get that out of your house would take quite a while. So that was kind of a deterrent. And we just wanted to get in and be warm for the winter. And maybe something for paper creed. Again, that might be good for ancillary structure or something small. If you kind of want to play around with that, right? I thought if you're an artist, it'd be a good thing for making sculptures out of her. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's just an you know, it's another technique. I'm kind of interested to try out all these different techniques. The thing with the paper creed is you have to seal it, yeah, because it, it does suck the water in there. So you have to like this rubber roofing stuff put it over there and like the elastomeric painted it's uh, Go for it. You know, pe you can do it. People uh, think you can't do it, but if you keep it simple enough and you got it in your head how you're going to do it. I think that's one of the nice things about urban building is that you don't need a lot of knowledge no, to get into it. It's just getting started, yeah. getting your hands in there and start working with it. I'd say the most it. technical aspect was probably making the roof because it's, you know, the carpentry and everything. But once you're just like, it's just like playing with mud when you're building it. Yeah. <laughs> and after on after here. one day of doing it, you're very comfortable with it. And it's, yeah, you with, get a with more repetition, you get a, like, a routine. Like a machine there. Somebody mixes while somebody's mm. forming, and then somebody's, you know, it's, it just goes on and on. And and uh, you can make it a pretty continuous flow even with just two people. So it becomes easier. It does. Nice. I really appreciate you guys. Oh, you're very welcome. Taking this time to sit down and talk a little bit about urban building and stuff like that. I know people really want to start using these techniques, but maybe they have a lot of questions or they're not sure how to get started and everything like that. I appreciate you. You know, we'll spend this time and give some information out. <laughs> Absolutely, and feel free to email and ask more questions or, you know, whatever you need. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Star. Everyone loves the animal. <laughs> <laughs>